What's up, everybody? Today we're going to talk about the origins of uh, eukaryotic organisms or uh, the start of uh, organelles, compartmentalization. Um, how did these things uh, begin? Okay, so let's go back early, early in the Earth's um, early history. Our first fossil record of uh, any life on the planet really is prokaryotic life, and uh, that, that evidence is right around the 3.5 billion year mark. So in uh, shallow seas today, we can look at uh, Shark Bay, Australia. Uh, they still have stromatolite colonies um, that are uh, what we feel to be pretty similar to these early prokaryotic beings, and um, they're, they're pretty unique. They're cool. Okay, but um, uh, early prokaryotes would have resided in shallow seas. They would have been you know, swimming around, moving around, um, you know, basic metabolism. And uh, they were all there was in the ocean for um, somewhere between one and to one and a half billion years. They evolved on their own. Uh, they uh, created different methods of metabolism, um, many of which still exist today. And uh, yeah, so right around, um, you know, 2.7 billion years ago, so somewhere in between. 3.5 and 2.7, we started to see some some different forms of metabolism, like I showed you, okay, or like I just mentioned, okay. So one of those types of metabolism would be consuming and digesting other prokaryotes. Uh, so that type of metabolism obviously uh, would would allow you to to break down their phospholipids and reuse them, uh, would have an increase. Um, ability for those cells to, to kind of utilize the proteins made by that other bacteria and uh, really beneficial. Um, so they would use digestive uh, enzymes to kind of break apart and uh, lice um, all of the different materials for that cell that they would eat and uh, they would recycle the pieces just like kind of like what we do today with, uh, with our basic metabolism okay in terms of digestion. All right so um, like I said somewhere around 2.7 billion years ago things switched up dramatically okay instead of breaking these things down and uh, digesting all the internal components what happened is um, through the process of phagocytosis the cells were engulfing each other but instead of breaking that cell down once it got inside the other cell um, they allowed that cell to reside inside of it so you can see here this cell has its own membrane its own outer wrapping and uh, this would be the cell that that engulfed it or phagocytized it, it has its own membrane, its own wrapping. And uh, in doing so, it allowed the cell to kind of pick up some really cool tricks, okay? And uh, you can imagine if, if this cell uh, had the ability to photosynthesize as many bacteria do, then if it was allowed to reside inside this cell, um, this cell might be able to pick up some extra energy in that process. So sunlight would be able to come down, energize that beast, and really increase how fast these things swim in the ocean relative to these other guys, you know, or a mitochondria-like prokaryote. That would enable the cells to have the ability to, to break down sugars at a high level, to use oxygen to do so, and um, it really would have been tremendously beneficial to the host cell or the cell that engulfed the smaller prokaryote. And um, we see right around this mark our first eukaryotic organism show up on the planet. So. Uh, I hope that kind of lays things out in, in a way that makes sense to everyone. Um, and as far as today goes, when we look back on these things, the biggest piece of evidence in my mind is when we look at a chloroplast, when we look at um, mitochondria, they have their own DNA. And so in our mitochondria, uh, the DNA that we have inside of our cells, uh, that comes directly from a maternal descendant, um, from your mother. and uh, so. Uh, excuse me, a maternal line, and so those um, mitochondrial DNA are, are passed from mother to child, and they are inherited in the, the cytosol of the egg. Uh, so when the sperm fuses, it's not contributing any mitochondrial DNA. All of that comes from the mother. So um, I know most people uh, have this idea that we're about 50% and 50% genetically from both parents, and in, in reality, um, we have a small portion of our DNA there that that is... Um, historically bacterial but inherited from our mother. Um, I hope that makes sense. So one other thing I wanted to point out to you guys is this whole concept of endosymbiosis. So right here we have inside. This endo means inside. Symbiosis means to live with. Uh, doesn't mean what kind of relationship it is. Uh, parasitism is a type of symbiosis as is commensalism but 
Um, it also could be like a mutualistic relationship as I just uh, showed you in this short video. Have a good day, everybody.